we're Jimmy and Jill, and this is our 2014 Ram Promaster 3500 extended high roof van. So we decided to build the van when we were living in Boston, and we were looking at rent prices, and Jill kind of saw the van life taking off, and we realized after looking at it that we could actually live in a van, travel, and save money when I work full time on the road. So that's what we've been doing for the last year and a half. And uh, we're hoping to, you know, keep, keep that train rolling. When we actually got the van, we moved out of our apartment, moved into my parents' place. My dad had all the tools and it took us about six months to do the actual conversion. And we did all of it ourselves. We got pointers, but you know, it's all us in here. So on the driver's side of the van, we have our whole kitchen set up pretty big as vans go. Um, we wanted a lot of space to do kitchen prep. We were kind of foodies. Um, so right here we have our two burner propane stove, which goes to the propane tank mounted underneath the rear of the van. Below the countertop we have this giant utensil drawer to keep everything in there, straws, knives, thermometers and stuff. And then below that we have our 75 liter fridge freezer combo. I'd say we go to the grocery store every six days about with uh, the cold food. Here we have our upper cabinets. Uh, they're pretty giant. Um, they can hold everything we need. This is the tea, coffee side. This is miscellaneous plates, bowls, and stuff like that. Uh, we have this area that is originally a coffee area. It's now just for our tea kettle, our brew snacks that we really like. And then there's the backsplash. It's actually real stone but it's peel and stick. Um, it has a little bit of foam in between. We really like it. This is our kitchen sink. It is 17 by 19 by nine. Um, so really deep, get a lot of dishes in there. Not that we leave them for very long. Um, we have a normal faucet hooked up to hot and cold and our 40 gallon uh, water tank. And this is a two stage filtration system that we use for brushing our teeth and water and stuff like that. Actually, in the front of the sink, we have a hideaway for our cutting board. And then down here, under that area where the filtration is, is the uh, opening for the fridge to vent out um, with our trash cans and our seven gallon gray water tank. At the end of the kitchen, instead of leaving extra counter space for more prep, we decided to put in what we call a fence, um, where we keep stuff from sliding around or dry dishes on the road or Chips and bread can go here, you know, whatever extra stuff we have. Um, anything that doesn't fit in here can go up here. Uh, but this is where we have some toiletries, toilet paper for the toilet, towels, extra food. Uh, here we have our personal drawers. We have um, USB ports in the back of them so we can charge things inside uh, without being out on the counter. Right here's our command center, or what we call it. This is the inverter uh, switch, uh, the thermostat, the battery monitor, our only mirror in the whole van, and here's our lovely little bookshelf. So on the passenger side of the van, we've got uh, just the seating area, big bench. It's got a lot of storage inside so we can keep whatever adventure gear is in season, just nice and easily accessible. Um, but sitting down, we actually have a slide out table and so you can use it as a short table or you can flip it open and we actually have a drawer for storage here. So, you know, keep laptops, notebooks, whatever, but it also can sit too. So the table's something like 40 inches long. Under the bed, we also have our toilet. So this is an airhead toilet. Uh, it just pulls out on nice 250 pound drawer slides, um, which we're both under that. So we don't have to worry about breaking those. Um, we can actually go a, a very long time without having to empty the composting section of the toilet. I think right now we're at around three months, but uh, if we're exclusively using the toilet, we'll probably empty the pee jug every two days, maybe three, if, if we you know really fill it up. We actually really like the airhead over alternatives because you do not have to open the composting section to empty the pee. You just you know open some tabs on the side and it pops right out. Uh, so it's a little bit more um, compartmentalized, compact. Uh, so we, we prefer it for that reason. So at the back of the van, we have a fixed 
queen width bed. It's actually a full length. Um, we were able to build some bump outs into the wall so that both of us can actually sleep across and have room to spare at the end, uh, which is nice. We're both 5'11 and under, so um, that's just enough for, for the two of us. Put it at a height where we can sit up fully. Um, and then the only other interesting thing is that we've got a window here so that on hot days, we can open up that window, turn both of our uh, top fans on exhausting, and it'll just make a nice wind tunnel right over our bodies. Um, we also have the skylight right here, which is our only access to the roof, but honestly, we just like it for stargazing. Over our feet, we have storage. So my storage, Jill's storage is at the back, uh, and that's the majority of our clothes storage beyond just where the clothing bins uh, at the foot of the bed as well. So um, it's more than enough for us. It works really well. And then the really cool thing that we've got is we have tucked away behind a screen as well. So this is just on a Visa arm, you know, runs off the DC power system and we can use it in bed, use it at the table. We just plug our phones right into it and that's how we consume media. No problem there. We didn't actually put any overhead cabinets uh, on over our heads on the passenger side of the van. Um, partially because obviously, you know, we wanted headspace over our heads, but we also really liked just the open, open feeling of the van that's caused by only having the cabinets on one side. So even when you're standing up, it feels like, you know, you've got a lot of space to move around in. Um, under the bed, we have a 40 gallon water tank on this side. Uh, we have obviously the toilet here, but we can fit bikes at the back and then under our heads is our electrical system. Um, and so our electrical system is just three Battleborn batteries, an inverter, and then we've got 500 watts of solar on the roof, uh, along with an alternator charger, just a battery to battery charger. The only other thing about the bed is that we've got uh, slats underneath, one for ventilation, but two, some sections are on hinges so we can store our laundry or access our backpacking gear, um, or shower gear, whatever. We've got all that underneath tucked away, only accessible when we really need it. We do actually have a shower in the van. Um, we just didn't want to sacrifice a, a whole large area um, just for a shower in, in a toilet, maybe a wet bath. Um, we knew we weren't going to use it too much. We have gym memberships, etc. So we wanted a solution that kind of got out of our way. So what we have here is actually a shower pan embedded in the floor. Uh, it's a stainless steel shower pan that we commissioned uh, just with some teak slats we got off Amazon inside. Um, and then we have the shower head right here next to the sliding door. So the beauty of this is that we can take it out, set it up inside, shower, set it up outside, you know, use it to clean off gear if we've got it, uh, clean off our paddle board, clean off uh, bikes, etc. Um, we have a shower curtain, but we just, you know, hang it from the ceiling from uh, these hooks up up here. And otherwise, this space during the winter, during ski season, we'll just use this for, for hanging wet gear anyway. And it's nice to have the shower pan underneath in case anything's dirty or wet still. Thank you so much for joining us for our van tour. Uh, if you want to follow along, you can look at Jill's Instagram, Jill on the Road. Uh, otherwise, we hope to see you out there. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project, but I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.